have been with the lab for about uh, 15 years now, and uh, three broad areas I've been working on, uh, which are related to glass and ceramics, are uh, one is uh, using millimeter waves and terahertz waves to uh, non-contact measure properties of ceramic or melt surfaces. Um, the reason I was using millimeter waves um, or terahertz waves are they are long wavelengths and they could penetrate a lot of harsh environments. Uh, so often you are interested in measuring properties uh, under extreme environments like high temperature, high radiation, or a corrosive environment. Uh, so that's one area I've been working on. And uh, another one is I, I group under non-oxide glasses. We have been working on chalcogenite, chalcopyrites, to come up with uh, a multifunctional materials for advanced optical application. One of the side uh, product came out of that is uh, multi-scale processing. We could take a, a simple chalcogenite glass like arsenic uh, trisulfide, and in one step we could make it anywhere from nanowires, droplet to continuous film using a new process. Um, so that was uh, one interesting area coming up. But the third and last one is uh, somewhat uh, different from what I've been doing. This is basically looking at nanosilica particles, how it impacts when it enters a live cell. And I was using uh, Fourier transform infrared uh, technology, spectroscopic technology, uh, adapting to, to live cell measurements, uh, basically introduce uh, nano silica into live cell and track the chemical signature. And uh, we found very interesting uh, things the silica does to the live cells. The nanomaterials are entering market uh, and some of the regulatory uh, procedures are not in place and we haven't fully understood uh, toxicity levels or what harm they could do to most of the, in most of the cases we do not know that. So these, some of these researches are to help that. Uh, in particular, I started using FTIR mainly because we want some rapid screening tool uh, because a lot of nanomaterials with a lot of characters are entering the research or market. You cannot do biological testing on every one of them. It's time consuming and expensive. Uh, that's where the FTIR comes in. I hope that will be a rapid screening tool. What we do there is uh, basically you look at uh, the uh, infrared regime of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, the reason we're looking at is this is the spectrum where you can see uh, different uh, bond vibrations, bond bending, and uh, resonances uh, because they all resonate or uh, uh, move or rotate or whatever in those frequencies. So what happens is if you look at your sample, you, uh, it, you get a characteristic spectrum. From that, you will know what kind of bonding or bonding changes happening in your sample. So for example, in our case, we are interested in, we know what is a pure silica bonding signature in FTIR, but we want to know what happens to general bondings in cell when silica enters into the cell. So what we do is we put cells and silica together in an FTIR setup, and then the FTIR gives you a spectrum signature of all these things going on. Then you figure it out what happens when you know, silica enters a cell. Uh, one data I, I can talk about is when silica enters, apparently it enters the membrane of the cell and it starts dissolving the membrane. So we could show as we start seeing silica entering by watching the silica peak go up and we see the membrane peak going down, it's dissolving. So this is one example how you can see how as silica is now entering the cell, I'm seeing corresponding changes in the cell because the cells have often carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen bonds, and if some of them are dissolving or changing, I will get the signature change. It's applicable to broad range of materials because several chemistries have signatures in FTIR. We chose silica because this is one classic example. And uh, um, by the way, the same approach could also be extended beyond the IR regime we talked about. By the way, you could, some of them we could do in visible light, and some of them we could do at higher frequency range, like a millimeter and terahertz wave, because similar approaches could be adapted.